and welcome to Creative Church. You guys look so good out there. Um, well, why don't you welcome our first time visitors? Well, I'm so glad to have you guys here. If you haven't been here, we love having new people here. Yeah. On your way in, you should have filled out an Orange Connect card. If you haven't yet, that's okay. We have plenty. And I want you to stop at the welcome card because we have a phenomenal gift for them, don't we? Yes, we do. Oh, my goodness. It's so good. Every first-time visitor gets a subscription to our free um, cell phone safety course. Yeah, it's really awesome. It's all about to teach your kids how to be safe on their smartphone. So I know some parents should clap about that, y'all. <laughs> I have a 10-year-old that's learning to use a phone, and let me tell you, this course is a lifesaver. I bet. Truly. I remember when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It would have been so good. Um, but next, we want you to take our three-visit challenge, right? Yes. It's a great challenge that we have here. Yeah. So our services can be different from time to time. So we want you to check us out three different times. Uh, that way your family can experience all that we have to offer. And I absolutely promise you when you're here, we will feed your faith and starve your fears. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, now everybody say belong. Belong. That's right. Belong is our newcomer's experience, and it is the gateway to everything we do here at Creative. We have one coming up on Saturday, October 29th. So scan the QR code behind me to register. You do not want to miss it. Yeah, you definitely don't want to miss it. We're about to step into a time of worship, but before we do, I'm going to um, lead us in a prayer. So everybody bow your heads. Jesus, I just thank you for these amazing people. I just pray right now, Lord, that you would just bring your Holy Spirit in a miraculous way today. And I pray that you'd put a deposit in each and every one of them that it would be marked. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
won't climb up coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down coming after me Come on There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up coming after me Come on, sing it if you believe it after us. It knows no boundaries. You're so, so good. You're so, so good. So I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though the seasons come quickly, you will always be
Listen, I'm, I'm calling a little bit of an audible. I'm not supposed to be up here right now. Uh, but I, I want to share something with you. I feel like I need to come up here and stir your faith. Can I stir your faith just a little bit? I love this song. This song it is a song of faith. It is a testimony song. And I don't know if you're in the valley today or you're on the mountain today or what kind of good or bad report you got this week. But again, I want to ask you, is it your testimony that God is good? Come on, any young people, is that your testimony? These kids are excited. Any seasoned saints? Any of my older people? Come on. David said, yeah, I was young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging for bread. And see, what's so important is how we overcome the enemy is through our testimony. It's through our declaration, through our words. The Bible says that there is power of life and death in thee. So when we speak life, when we testify, we're not only telling the goodness of God, but what we're doing is we're saying, God, do it again. We're creating a prophetic atmosphere that if God did it here, then he's gonna do it there. If God did it then, then he's going to do it now. Come on, do y'all have faith in the room today? So I don't want you to just see yourself singing a beautiful song. We don't sing songs. We make declarations. So I want you to open up your mouth, and I want you to release that he is good and that it keeps on getting better because his word says that he is good and he's faithful to all generations. Do you believe it, Creative Church? I said, do you believe it, Creative Church? Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to sign you up for the choir. Can you join the choir? And you just start going like this. Come on, everybody. And if it helps, bite your bottom lip. Sometimes that helps. All right, now put your hands together. Come on. Y'all feeling good so far? Now that we got our moves and we got our clap, can we just sing that? You keep on getting better. Come on, sing it out, Josh. You keep on, everybody. Oh, testify, testify. Keep on getting better. Keep on getting better. Keep on getting better. Keep on getting
God, you're so good. that you are breaking off miracles because we have come hungry. We have come hungry for a move from you. We have come hungry from a touch from your spirit. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house today. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, I can't stand still. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes, y'all. Anybody else need to run? No? Okay, just me. <laughs> All right. I prayed. I need to dismiss. <laughs> YNC Middle, you guys can go and have an amazing lesson today. Let's give them a round of applause as they leave. Those are your kids, hungry for a touch from the Lord also, right? Every Wednesday night, we have YNC for middle school and high school here at Maple Grove at 7 p.m. And let me tell you, they are set to outpace us adults. Every week, there are hundreds of kids down here at the altar getting filled with the Holy Spirit and ready for life change. So let's celebrate that. If you have kids, get them here on Wednesday. Come on. Yes. All right. You guys can have a seat. Coming up on Sunday, October 30th, we have a great treat for you guys. We are going to have an indoor trunk or treat. So we'll have some cars in the lobby. They'll be decked out. And it is a chance for your kids to get a ton of candy. You are welcome. There will be so much, and we want you guys to take it home. But it's also a chance for you to bring your kids that are in elementary school and younger in costume. Family-friendly costumes only, but they'll get a chance to walk across stage and show you their costumes. It's really cute, and it is a great Sunday. So again, that's coming up on Sunday, October 30th. But you can check out our events tab on our app for all the upcoming details, okay? And then um, from the bottom of my heart, and on behalf of Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Joanne, I want to say thank you. Thank you to our giving family. It is truly because of you that we are able to do amazing things like our chunk or treat and buy lots and lots and lots and lots of candy. Do you parents do that when your kids come home from trick or treating? Do you like take half of it and put it, hide it somewhere so they don't eat it all? And then you find it about this time the next year? <laughs> That's how much candy you'll get. So you're welcome. <laughs> um, but thank you for giving. Here at Creative, there are so many different ways to give. Um, and you can check that out. You can scan the QR code or there's lots of options online. If you need an envelope today, raise your hand. Our ushers will give you one. But thank you for being obedient to the Lord. Not just because you are obedient, but that's how you show someone you love them, right? Because the Lord says obedience is better than sacrifice. So thank you. Um, I want to pray over that offering. So if you guys could all raise a hand and repeat after me, say, Dear Jesus, I sow this seed of faith into good ground. Let it bless the kingdom and let it bless my life. I rebuke disease lack, want, depression, anxiety, and sickness. I now release the blessings of God, the favor of God, his mercy, wisdom, creativity, and life. Let it bless this house in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I want you to go ahead and check out this video from Pastor Jonathan. Hey, Creative Church, I'm so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. 
And uh, man, I know God's presence is at our Spring Lake Park campus and our Maple Grove campus and everybody that's watching online. I just wanna take a moment and share with you something that the Lord has spoken to me. I know we were getting ready to do a big production for a couple of weeks and the Lord has spoken to me and I've never done anything like this um, where we've completely paused everything that we had in the works. But the Lord spoke to me and, uh, and wants us to postpone what we were getting ready to do with a big production and to focus on revival. I believe that there is miracles that God wants to do in the hearts, the families, the marriages, the young people here at Creative Church. And so I'm asking you to partner with me. He said, son, don't worry about the people. He said, the people are with you. The people will, the people are, are hungry for a move of God. And I believe it's a pool of Bethesda anointing that God's getting ready to pour out here at Creative Church. And so this Sunday and the next two Sundays, I'm calling our church to a solemn assembly of revival, a healing revival and believe God to heal our relationships, to heal our marriages, to heal our homes, to heal us physically, and to do a work that only he could do, only he could do in the hearts and the lives of the people who call Creative Church home. You know, as a pastor and as leaders and all of our staff, we can do all we can do to build the church. But the Bible says, unless God builds the church, those that build it labor in vain. And one of the things I am wise enough to know is that I don't know everything and that I'm trusting him. And he told me that the church would follow me into his presence. And so I'm asking you to partner with me for this Sunday and the next two. And let's believe God for the impossible. If this is your home church, I'm asking you to be a part of it for the next two Sundays as I call us together for a solemn assembly for a healing revival. This Sunday, I am uh, ministering in uh, Detroit and I've asked my dad um, to bring the word of God this morning. Um, there's really no one I respect more um, in a walk with God and a relationship with the Lord than my dad. My mom and dad are my heroes. And um, I know their life. They don't, they don't just say something, they live it. And they have modeled that for me all of my life. And at the end of the service today, um, I've asked at our Maple Grove campus if my dad would come down to the altar and lay hands on people and believe God for miracles. I've also asked our leaders at our Spring Lake Park campus to come down to the altar in the front and lay hands on people and let us pray the prayer of faith over you and believe God for miracles in your life, healing in your life, in your marriage, in your home, healing in your finances, healing physically, and I'm asking you, if you know anyone that needs God to do a miracle in their life, bring them for this healing revival. I want you to open up your hearts. I want you to open up your spirit and believe God to speak to you today. Dad has a word for our church. I love him with all my heart. And I've seen God do miracles through this man. He's a genuine man of God. And um, he's, a, he's a straight shooter. You're gonna hear a lot of scripture today. And he's gonna to minister to your spirit, not your flesh. He's here to minister to your spirit. Those things that are of the spirit are spirit. Open your heart. If you're visiting, you're not here by chance. God has you here for a purpose. And I want you to open your heart today. Be a part and let's see what God will do during this healing revival. I love you. Thank you for trusting me. More importantly, thank you for trusting the Lord. I want you guys to help me honor my dad. And I want you to get on your feet. Come on, at Spring Lake Park and at our Maple Grove campus and even those that are watching online. And I want you to put your hands together and help me welcome my father, Pastor Rose's eye to the stage. God bless you.
I pray for you? I'd be glad to, honey. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll help my granddad preach well, and I declare that you'll help people come to know you. In Jesus' mightiest name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Love you. Love you. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. It's a joy to be with you. Joy to be back in the house of the Lord. Good to have my lovely wife, Pam. Uh, 47 years. Still got my bride with me. And uh, <clears throat> I'm proud of that. Thank God for our grandkids. Thank God for our kids. Uh, three kids, three kids in love, six kids, twin, uh, 13 grandkids. I'm rich. Amen. All the family serving God, loving God, living for Jesus. That's what it's all about. Isn't that wonderful? How many of you believe Jesus makes all the difference? Jesus makes all the difference in your life. I'm asking God to open the windows of heaven and pour out a revival of his spirit. Your pastor, Pastor Jonathan, talk about that for the next, for the next uh, two services. I pray not only for the services, but during the week that God's spirit would just rest down upon you, upon your family, upon this church, that God will be, bring a stirring and a moving in your heart to him, that God will bring a brokenness in your life and that God will bring a revival of unity, a revival of togetherness, a vi revival of oneness, that he'll just hug the body of Christ within his arms and love on you, that God may minister to you, that God may reveal himself unto you, that God may show you his glory in the miraculous, in the supernatural, in the miracles of God. God loves you. He wants nothing but his best for you. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that today. Hallelujah. The best decision one can ever make is to give yourself to him. Hallelujah. And said, Father, Daddy, fill me. I'm hungry. I yearn for you. I long for you. Come upon me and clothe me with yourself like a garment. Wrap yourself round about me, O oh, Father, and let me walk through this earthly realm clothed with your presence. Clothed with your spirit. Have my feet shod, walking with my God, walking with my Lord. Your life will be blessed. Your life will be enriched. Your life will be full. Hallelujah. That's the purpose of God coming. That's the purpose of Christ. He said, I have come that you might live, not die, that you might live and have life and have life more abundantly. The fullness, the resurrected life, the powerful life. A glorious life. Hallelujah. We're in a battle today. The church is facing a battle. The family is facing a battle. The nation, the nations of the world are facing a great battle. And, that the, and the battle is over truth. The war is over the minds of the people to bring you into the darkness, into bondage. How many of you believe we're living in the closing days as we know as the church age? The Bible, if you know scripture, we're coming, we're in the closing days of the Gentile age and the, and the closing of the church age. And we're coming, Jesus is about to come for his bride. He's about to come for his church. How many of you are ready to go home? Come on, how many of you are ready to go home? I'm ready to go home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God gave me a message. I was in my sleep and I could hear myself sleeping. And the Spirit of the Lord, and the Spirit of the Lord came to me and preached to me a sermon. And, and the Spirit of the Lord preached to me a sermon entitled, In Transition. Say that phrase, In Transition. Where you're not, you're, you're not here, but, but you're not there. You're closer there than you're here. And you're living a life of transition. You release the earthy. You have no desire to be here. Your heart is with your Father. 
and you're longing for him. And God gave me many biblical characters who were in transition. I'm in transition. I'm looking for my Lord. I'm detached from the earthy. And I'm more closer home, not only in years, but also in life. I'm closer home than this present world. I see nothing here I want to stay here for. We're just passing through. How many of you believe that? We're pilgrims, strangers, foreigners in a strange and in a foreign land. Jesus is coming again. He is coming soon. The battle that we're facing today in these last days, just before Christ come and the tribulation sets in in this earth, is the battle of truth. The truth from the lie. I look at the, the phrase on the wall there, tell the truth and shame the devil. I said tell the truth and destroy the devil. Destroy him. Satan, get out of my face. Get under my feet where you belong. For God has given you power and authority to pull down every stronghold, every demonic presence. And don't allow the darkness to come upon you. And don't allow Satan to bring you into the lie. The big lie, if, you, if you're listening, uh, watch what's happening. Listen to what's taking place. A lie is being fed, not only in this nation, but globally, the lie. And that has to happen. I believe Satan has opened up the, the portals of hell. And he has let loose legions of seducing, perverted, vile, foul, ungodly spirits. Watch what's happening. Listen to what's happening. I want to tell you everything. It's turning on its head. And that has to happen. As painful as it is. And you think it's bad? Honey, buckle up. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. God said it's only the beginning of sorrows. Perversiveness, pervertedness, vileness. Stuff that you never could imagine in, in all your lifetime. You're hearing and you're seeing. And that has to happen. Because the lie is being fed. Another life, another world, another, another time. And darkness has to encroach the land. And as darkness encroaches the land, the light will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Until the whole world is in total darkness. And that will happen. We're going home. Hallelujah. Anybody said, the Lord come today, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. If Jesus comes now, I'm home. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Goodbye, devil, goodbye. Tell the truth. Declare the truth. Speak the truth. The battle began in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And Satan hasn't lightened up one iota. The battle has been raging in every generation since the beginning of time. We're living in the closing of time as you know it. Where Jesus will come and snatch his bride and take us home. Ready or not, here he comes. The Bible said those who are ready will go with him. And those who are not going to stay put. God help you if you miss him. I'm not going to get into all of that tribulation, but we're close. I want to share with you a message entitled on the battle that we're talking about. I want to talk to you today about the, the power and the authority of truth. Because that's the battle that is being waged in the church, in the schools, in the family, in the nation, in your own life, in your marriage, the battle for truth. The battle for truth. Because truth has authority. Truth has power. 
You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Stand fast in the liberty. The truth brings liberty, freedom, deliverance, victory. The truth. There's only in life the lie and truth. The Bible tells us Satan is the lie. And he's the father of lies. Jesus said, I am truth. The personified truth of God. I am truth. And in me there is no darkness at all. The lie is darkness and bondage and death. Jesus said, I've come that you might live, that you might have life. He said, I've come to bring you into the light, which is the word of God, the knowledge of Christ. Many are destroyed for lack of truth, lack of knowledge. Knowledge is power. Truth is power. That's why it has authority. It is power. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. Unto salvation, the totality of the circumference of your eternal destiny and your walk with God. In Genesis, we begin the message. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, he always plants the doubt, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, the worst thing you could do in your life is have a conversation with the devil. <whistles> you will never win it. And that's what she did. And she lost it. We may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat. You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Don't touch the hot stove. Don't touch the darkness. You'll get burned. You'll get killed. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, liar. The kids used to say, liar, liar, pants on fire. See, he's a lie. He's the father of lies. And she took the bait. And she believed the lie. Don't you believe the lie? Speak the truth. No matter what the cost, no matter what it costs you, speak the truth. You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree, that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree desirable to make one wise. Hmm. The Bible said she put her hand to it and she took. She also gave to her husband and he did and he ate. He did eat. And the Bible said the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. And they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves to cover themselves, to make covering for themselves. Men are still sewing fig leaves. You'll get that tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
Satan hates the truth. He hates it with a passion because it exposes who he is. As long as he can stay in the darkness and deceive you and lie to you, he's got the upper hand over you. But you know in truth, you have power. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of knowing truth. Tell the truth. Speak the truth. In the book of Daniel chapter 8, 11 through 12, the Bible said in the last days, we're living in the last days, the Antichrist will cast truth to the ground. We're not, the true church, the true bride, she's not going to be here when that happens. Remember I told you, darkness is going to fill the, fill the land, going to fill the, this globe. And all hell is going to be turned loose on this planet. Woe, woe, woe to them who are left to go through what's coming on this earth. The Antichrist will cast truth to the ground in the last days. Let me tell you what truth is. Truth is the word. Thy word is truth. Truth is the light. The light is Christ. Christ is the light. The light is the glory of God. Don't pat a cake. Give him a round of applause. Come on. So when you look at the truth, tell the truth. Shame the devil. Tell the truth. Destroy that rascal. God has given you power and authority to pull down every stronghold, casting down all imaginations and every high thing that will exalt itself above the knowledge of God, bringing, bringing everything that you struggle with under feet, hallelujah, taking authority over it, bringing it under you, hallelujah. No weapon form against you when you declare the truth, when you walk in truth and you live in truth shall prosper against you. Thank God for the word of faith. Thank God for the word of truth. The word of God is so critical, so important, and so vital to your spiritual development and your spiritual maturing in Christ. Hear what the word of God said in Proverbs 23 and 23, by the truth, by Buy the truth, buy the truth, and do not sell it. For God's sake, don't you sell truth. Buy it, lay a hold of it, declare it. This is mine. Truth is mine. God said, declare a thing. Let the devil know where you stand. So many Christians have so many mouth. Open your mouth. Declare before God. Let the demons of hell hear you. Let the angels of heaven hear you. Let those around you hear you. Declare it. Speak it. Shout it from the rooftop. God is with you. Hallelujah. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instructions and understanding. Truth is the most important commodity that you will ever buy. It's a life transforming, changing reality. Truth. This battle is going on from the beginning of time. We're in an age and a time in which everybody declares that to have truth. 
It's my truth. No. There's only one truth, and that's in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, who is personified truth. See how the devil can lie to you? Deception. See, see, Satan doesn't have to convince you. He just has to deceive you. And you do his bidding. And you do his work for him. God said many will even kill one another saying they do God's bidding. We're there. Eve was deceived. She took the bait. It cost her her life. It cost her her relationship with God. It cost Adam and Eve the glory that they had. It cost them a death sentence. For they died. They wasn't supposed to. They were supposed to live for eternity. Death set in. God put a cherubim to the tree of life, lest they put their hand to it, partake it, and live in that sinful condition throughout eternity. And they died. There's no such thing as my truth. Jesus, if you, if you claim Christ, yes, he is my truth, but only in Christ. There's another lie that are going through globally. The many ways to God. There's only one way. See, as long as there are many ways, there are many truths. Let me say that again. As long as there are many roads, many ways, then there are many truths. Oh, I've got the truth. Oh, I've got the truth over here. Oh, I've got the truth. Oh, I've got the truth. Oh, I've got the truth. I've got the truth. Because they're in, all coming in different ways. And Jesus says, oh, no. He said, I am the way. I am, I'm not a way. I'm not a way. I am the way. I am uh, the truth. I am the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I am the gate. I am the door. You try to come to God some other way. He, he used some strong languages. He said, you are a thief, you are a robber, and you are a liar. Because you've been spoon-fed the lie. And you took the bait. He is the way. Jesus stood in Pilate's churchman hall and Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Jesus, the personified truth, was in his midst and he couldn't see it. He couldn't recognize it. Jesus himself, truth, was there. And he said, what is truth? The battle is raging in these last days. Who has the truth? God or Satan? Jesus said, I am truth. Jesus declared himself, I am truth. Jesus said, Satan is a lie and the father of lies. Who will tell the truth? Who will speak truth? the truth. Who will declare the truth? Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Speak the truth. Destroy the devil. The Bible said Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. That you can have life. That you can have freedom. That you can be delivered. Jesus didn't just come to save you from sin. That's elementary. That's only the first phase of your salvation. He came to deliver you 
to set you free, that sin shall have no more dominion over you, that sin shall not dominate you, entrap you, enslave you, and bring you back to the hog pen. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Stand fast in the liberty, in the freedom, wherefore Christ has brought you and made you free. And don't go back into it. Don't go back into it. Who will preach the truth? Not everybody preaches truth. Who is going to preach the truth? You preach the truth today, they cancel you. They don't want to hear you. They don't want to debate you. They don't want to talk to you. They just cancel you. You don't exist. They cancel you on Facebook, social media. Come on, talk to me here. They erase your account because you speak truth. You speak what God is and what he says in his word. And we're living at that day where that's the darkness, that's the evil that is coming upon the earth. And we see it coming in government we see it coming in families. We see it, you allow it. You see it come upon you. You see it coming in the churches. You see it in the schools. You see it in every aspect of society, the darkness. Like, wow, like a dark cloud. And with that comes all the hideous, the most vile, the most wicked, the most abominable, the most evil. Oh my God, that you've never, now turn your head without a curling iron. Turn the hairs on your head without a curling iron. Curl your hair. Like what? Everything is upside down. Come on, hello? Don't put your hand in the sand like an ostrich because it's going to happen with you without you knowing. If you don't know, then you're going to be suckered into it and caught up in it and your soul's going to be perish. Your soul's going to lost, be lost. <laughs> open your ears, open your mind, open your heart. The Bible said, run to the light. Who is going to preach the truth? Who are going to teach the truth? The Bible said that in the last days there's going to be a lot of false teachers, a lot of false prophets. The scripture said in the last day, many, 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 many in the church are going to depart from the faith. The faith. Say, this is the faith. This, this faith gives you faith. Without this, you have no faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of faith, the word of God. The Bible said, many shall depart from the faith. Here what happened, giving heed, giving in to seducing spirits. Listen to the people who speak lies, lies, the lie, the great lie, the big lie, Satan, the lie, speak lies in hypocrisy. Why? Having their conscience seared, cooked, branded, where their conscience is lifeless. They have no conviction. The Bible said their conscience are seared with hot iron. We're there, church. Anybody hear me? I said, we're there. We're there. God says to us, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Walk before God in reverent fear, 
and righteousness, godliness, and true holiness. Who's going to tell the truth? Who will speak the truth? Who will declare it? Who will teach it? Who will walk in it? That's a challenge. I dare you to walk in it. Walk in it and see the glory of God. Walk in it and see the power of God. I said walk in it and see the miraculous and the supernatural and the miracles. Walk in it. Paul said when you walk in truth, when you walk in the word, here's a miracle. Anybody love miracles? No? Let me give you a miracle that you can experience. The Bible said when you walk in the truth, have it, say, having your feet, Sean, with the preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can hear it. You can say, I believe it. But if you don't walk in it, it means nothing to you. God said, and the truth, hear me, the truth is not in you, and you make God a liar. And the scripture said, let God be true. Let every man be a liar. For God is not the lie. He is truth. Say it. He is truth. He's not the lie. Satan is the lie. God is truth. Hear what Paul said. Let me give you the miracle. Paul said, when we walk in the word... The Word, because the Word is not a book. This is not a book. This Logos, written Word, is, but it's more than that. The Bible said the Word of God is spirit and life. Oh, huh. say that with me. The Word of God is spirit, and the Word of God is life. So what happens when you walk in it? Paul said the Word becomes flesh in you to you and Christ the personified word is formed in you the hope of glory this is when you become like Paul said a living epistle read of all men. You become the walking word. You become the talking Bible. Oh, hallelujah. You become an, an epistle read of all men. Some people might never dart the doors of a church, but you might cross their life and they'll read you like a book. Make sure it's the right book. Oh, oh, I said make sure it's the right book. I feel liberty in this house. Anybody feel freedom? I feel freedom. I feel liberty. And I feel an anointing in the house. Teach the word. Walk in the word. Live the word. Live the truth. People said, live like I tell you, not as I do. No. Be a living epistle before them. The Christ in you. How can you live? It's not you. It's the Christ in you. It's the word in you. The transforming power of God's word. I'm talking about the power and the authority of the word. Only truth. Say that phrase. Only, only, only truth has the power to set men free. To deliver you. From the powers of Satan's kingdom. From the dark world. And all that it entails. And all that it is. The church is called. In scripture. To be that pillar. Of truth. And if the church. Falls short. Of being that pillar of truth. We're in trouble. And let me tell you. We're in trouble. 
because the church has fallen off the horse when it comes being that pillar of truth. The pillar is like that anchor that's, that holds steadfast, unmovable, sure, abounding. No matter what you go through in life, the word of God stands. Truth always stands alone. That's when there's the separation comes in. Truth stands alone. Jesus stood alone. He was alone in judgment. He was alone. He was alone. Truth stands alone. Truth needs nothing or no one to prop it up. Let me hold you up. Lean on this. No, truth is truth all by itself. It's different than the lie. The lie, you have to spin another lie to prop up another lie, to, to, to cover another lie. And you spin yourself a spider's web and you're caught in the web that you spin. That's why when you go into a courtroom in a court case, they cross-examine you. <laughs> oh. They bring it after you give your testimony. Now, the other group comes in with their team and they begin to cross-examine you. They heard what you said. Now they've got an attorney that'll come, going to ask the same questions, but in a different manner. That if, if it was not truth in the beginning, you'll find that, da, 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 uh, 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 what? And then, and then when you begin to spin the web, then they bring another cross-examiner with the same questions, but at another angle. So they twist you up again. And they bring one more. They got three. That's called cross-examination. And he comes with the same question that you already swore to. And he brings the third one. Same at a different angle. And by the time they get the three of those ready, it's like, what? And you're branded in the court a liar. And your testimony is gone. Truth. Whatever the cost, say the truth. Declare the truth. Live the truth. Walk the truth. Speak the truth. If you do that, God will stand with you. God will deliver you. God will help you. God is pleased with you for he stands with you. He is personified truth. Truth delivers. Truth liberates. Truth set men free. Jesus said, he whom the Son has set free is free. Indeed, indeed. Yes, the battle is raging against the souls of men. And many men are perishing because Satan the deceiver has deceived many has deceived many families, destroyed many marriages, many homes, many churches, has many nations in bondage and darkness. Truth. What is truth? Truth is a quality of state being true. Fidelity, constant, constancy, that which conforms to fact or reality, that which is characterized as being in accord with what is or what has been or must be as to seek truth. 
Jesus said in, 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 in John 17, 17, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Tr truth is the established principle that is of sound, that is of sound principle. It has been said when all the evidence converge upon a proposition and all essential doubt is removed, it is then said to be truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible is the truth printed. Jesus is the truth personified. He is the living, breathing, life-giving, all oh, power, truth. <laughs> truth is an agreement with reality. Truth is one of the essential perfections of deity. Hear me. I said, truth is one of the perfections of deity. The Bible said, in fact, Jesus said, there is no variableness, neither there is any shadow of turning. For Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word doesn't change. Heaven and earth pass away, but the truth remains forever. Fads come and fads go but the truth remains forever. Generation come and generation go, but the truth remains forever. Thy word, O oh Lord, is forever settled in heaven. He settled it, and you can't change it. I can't change it. If you don't live in it, a death sentence is on you. If you don't live in this book and walk in this book, you're dead, and I'm speaking truth to you. But if you want life, you're only passing through. And this life is so short. Put your hand to your mouth. Do that. The Bible said your life is as a hand breath. That's your life. I don't care if you live to be 100. Gone. And you fly away. That's truth. He said, this every day, the church need a revival. Oh, God, bring a revival of your truth, a revival, oh, God, in the body of Christ. We're, 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 we're the family, the nation, the people, the church, where you as an individual can experience the liberty and the freedom and the deliverance and the power and the grace and the joy and the love and the peace and the flowing of the presence and the glory and the grace of God in your life. In him, there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He is the truth, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is truth? Truth is the crown of all human excellence. No one likes a liar. God said all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with brimstone. Truth has the scriptures as its record. And they are they that testify of me, Jesus says in John 5, 39. Truth has Jesus as its prince. He is the prince of truth. Truth is preeminently the gladsome song, the good tidings of great joy. Truth brings peace and joy and hope. Truth gives life. Truth dispels all the darkness in which the lie dwells. Truth calls you to live a life that is transparent. My life is like a glass, clear, washed clean. There's no 
secrets in truth. Well, I can't let my husband know this. I can't let my wife. I can't let like, you. Yeah. There's no covering of truth because truth has shined like a bright light. Like, truth refused to be hid under a bushel and to be hidden. You cannot hide truth. Truth is light in your face. Deal with me like the elephant in the room. Deal with me. Here I am. Accept it, walk away from it at your peril. Come to the truth, and you come to Christ, for he is truth. When you come to Christ, you come and receive all that he is, all that he has, all that he gives to you. And what did he say? He promised us, I have come. Say, I have come that you might live, that you might have life, that you might have life more abundantly in the fullness of his grace with joy and peace and life and freedom and liberty and hope. Oh, my God. Oh, we're in your life. There is a song. There is praise. There is worship. There is thanksgiving. Oh, my God. There's so much that awaits you. Don't throw it away. So much that God gives you. Don't throw it away. Run to the light. Run to truth. I'm not finished, but I'm going to hold it here. Truth. Many are hungry and yearning and crying for truth. Who will speak it? Who will declare it? Who will tell it? Who will preach it? Who will teach it? Who will live it? Who will walk in it? Who will take possession of it and call it mine? Mine. So many people only want a little, a little bit of Jesus. They say, a little Jesus. Say that phrase, a little Jesus. I don't want the big man Jesus. I just want the little Jesus. Well, you saying, I just want just a little bit of the word. Do you know, if you're not hungry for the word, he that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Paul said that you might be filled with all of the fullness of God and of Christ. Till, process, Christ be formed in you, the hope of glory. See, when Adam and Eve took the bait and received the lie, they lost the glory. All that Jesus did on the cross is to restore the image in you and the glory that was lost. That's what the cross is for. And to make you whole as if it never happened. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Wow. As if it never happened. As if you've never sinned through the blood, through the cross. And the glory is restored. What do you mean the glory, the clothing, the covering of God upon you? Paul says to this, he said, in the resurrection, anybody believe in the resurrection? Anybody believe in the rapture? Two of you? He said this, one glory of the moon, one glory of the sun, one glory of the star. He said each star differs in brightness, 
in brilliancy, in glory. He said, so are you in the resurrection. Now listen to this. Not everybody within the rapture of the resurrection is going to come forth with the same dimension of glory. That depends on your walk. That depends on your life. That depends on how much of Jesus you're willing to possess and take hold because he is the glory of God. The glory is not yours. It's him. Say it's him. That's why the prophet said he must increase I must decrease. Tell, Paul said, there's no more I but Christ. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. I die daily that I might live. Yet not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Woo! This is not the first service, so pastors say, say, I could take all the time I want. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Because I love you, I speak truth. Now, truth is hard to the flesh because the flesh doesn't like truth. That's why it's important we bring the flesh to the cross and say, by faith, die with truth, which is Christ, in your life. That now Christ can literally walk in you, live in you, speak through you because there's no more you left. Anybody hear that? Anybody just heard that? See, when we come to the cross and you got to mean this because if you don't, it means nothing. This is after you're saved. Anybody saved? I'm going now in the journey of becoming. And you say, now, Father, the Holy Spirit will deal with you and bring you to the cross. The Holy Spirit will say, do you want to go there? Because it's going to cost you. What is it going to cost you? You. Huh? Hello. I went to church and they sent me, they, they hand me a, 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 a book they were studying. This was during the midweek. And you know what the title said? 21 points to the better you. 21 points. 21 points to try to fix you. How many of you believe I can't fix you? Most of all, you can't fix yourself. So you come to us. And guess what? We can't fix you. We cannot fix you. In fact, you go to God. He don't want to fix you. You know where he wants you? He wants you dead. Because only when you die can he live. Only when you die can he live. In him we live, in him we move, in him we exist, in him we have our being, and without him we can do nothing. And the Lord saying, let me tell you the beauty of that, the result of that. When you give your life fully, you give up the world. You give up your natural self-life, your soul life, your flesh. You die to the kingdom of darkness, Satan's kingdom. You die to sin. 
And you die with God by faith. He died literally. But you die with him in agreement, say, by faith, to these things. Now, you know what that means? That means you have no more life. And Christ becomes your life. Wow! You know what that does? God becomes fully and totally responsible for you. Wow. Woo! Let that sink in. And when it's like that, nothing, say nothing, nothing happens in your life unless God orders it. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. You might not understand it, but God is in it. That's why he say, trust me. Do you know suffering is a part of your salvation? Trust me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not under your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And when things happen, you don't want to the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. No, 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 no. You go to your father. Say, Daddy, what's going on? What's happening? I don't understand this. You go to your father with all sincerity. And if you do that, he'll come to you. I've had, oh my God, I live my whole life. I live talking with him and he talks with me. He will come to you and he'll commune with you. He will sup with you. That's his word. He'll come reveal truth to you. He'll show you why you're going through, why you're going through. And it's, everything has purpose. It doesn't just happen. Well, it just, no, 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 no. Won't you come to that place in your life in the cross? You know, you know what kind of peace that gives you? You know what? You, the peace, the freedom, the joy. To live like that. And let me say one more thing. I'm going to zip it if I can. We have a tendency to hold on to the flesh. To this. But look at me. Say to this. And we fight for this with energy and in. When we can't control it, then it affects us and we get negative and, and we cross and we pull and we fight. And it takes its toll on your spirit. God said, release it. Say, release it. God wants you to live a life in total faith, total trust. Say with me, God said in his word, Say, the body is for the Lord. The Lord is for the body. So if it's His, why are you holding on to it? If you're holding on to it, you're full of fear. You're scared to death. And, the, and boy, the world pushed fear because they got an agenda. And it's not pretty. It's dark for what's coming down the pike. And you say, see, but you need to live like this. God, you want me home today? I go home without any reservation. I go home. Lord, you're my healer. I trust you. Where's your faith? You could throw God under the bus. He can't keep you. The Bible said you're kept by the power of God in Jesus' name. You make God a liar when you say God can't keep you. You have no faith. You're listening to the world, the drumbeat of the world. And you're fighting, you're holding on to this. You're not free. You cannot say he whom the Son has set free and, and let this consume you. Hello? 
So we release it. Wow. Freedom. We release it. And Father, you want me home today. I go home. Paul said it's better to be with him than to be in this earth. That's where God wants us to live. He said, whether you live, you live under the Lord. Whether you die, you die under the Lord. Whether you live or die, you are with him. Freedom. See, we talk about freedom, but you need to hear what freedom is. Freedom from you. Freedom from this, freedom from sin, freedom from the world, freedom from darkness, freedom from the lie, freedom from bondage. Free, delivered, set free by the power of God. Stand with me. I feel that freedom. And I'm not just telling you something like somebody got saved yesterday. I've got a resume with God. 71 years. I walk it. I live it. I talk it. I breathe it. It's me. He is mine and I am his. I'm consumed with him. He's consumed with me. He sings to me. He preaches to me. He teaches me. He comes to me in the night season. He, oh, his presence and his glory comes upon me. Like David said, waves and billow cover me. God is not a myth. He's not a tale. He's not a story. He is a reality. I want all those that say, Pastor, and I'm still pastoring. I have a church. Still pastoring. Pastor, I want all of God. I want, I want that freedom. I want, I want to live that life of truth, that life of the word, that life of Christ. I don't want to hold on to anything in this earthly realm. God came to me some years ago and he loved on me and he hugged on me and he called me, oh, my son, I love you. But he said, I got a word for you. He said, only what you hold on to can Satan use against you. Amen. Hold on to nothing, nothing. I hold on to no children. I love my children. I hold on to no grandchildren. I hold on to not even my own life. Freedom. I put it all in the hand of God. And whatever God gave me, I said, God, I give back to you. Only you can keep it. I can't keep it. I'm flesh. I give it back to you. I said, Lord, thank you, but here, yeah, keep this for me. And when you give it all back to God, that brings freedom in your life. Oh, I'm worried about this, and I'm worried about that. Worry, worry, worry. Feel frustrated. Oh, my God. Balance him. No, give it. Get, release it. I release it. Release your husbands. Come on. Release Seriously, release your wives, release your children, release your job. Come on, release relationship. You don't know what freedom is until you start releasing. Release it, release it, release it, release it. That doesn't mean that you don't love. Love is not in the equation here. I'm talking about control talking about domination, manipulation. I'm talking about you being all you. I'm the man. No, you're dust. You're dust. You're nothing without God. God, take the breath out your nostrils and you fall on the floor in a heap. How many of you would run to the altar and say, Father, I want all of you. 
I want all of you. I want all of you. I want all of you. I want all of you. I want all of you. I want all of you. Lift your hands to the Lord with me. Say, Father, I give myself to you fully, totally, completely, in full surrender, in full submission, in full obedience to you. I love you. I need you. I need you more than I need myself. In you I live. And I release everything that I'm holding on. I release it to you, my family, everything, my own life. I release it to you that I may find freedom, that I may know you like I've never known you before. Where now is no more a religion. It's a real relationship with the God of my salvation. I love you, Jesus. Come upon me. To ask him right now. Say, Father, come upon me. Come upon me. Rest down on me. Clothe me with your glory, with your power, with your spirit. Engulf my life with your love, with your joy and your peace. Bring a revival in my spirit. Bring a revival in my family. Bring a revival in my church. Bring a revival in our nation. Bring a revival. Stir us, O oh God. Change us, O oh Lord. O oh God, cause me to walk in truth. Declare the truth. Live the truth. Become truth. In Jesus' name. I want you to leave your seats and just come up here with me quickly. Run up here with me. Run up here. Fill, fill the altars with me. All of you, just quickly for a moment, gather around the altars with me. I'm going to ask a covering over you. I'm going to pray a covering over you. I'm going to ask that the mantle of God's glory fall upon you. I'm going to ask that God put a shield around about you. That God protect you and preserve you and present you in that time faultless, blameless, holy before the coming of Christ. In Jesus' name. They're still coming. Oh, anybody feel the presence of God? I don't, how many of you feel the presence of God in this house? The presence of God, the glory of God, the Spirit of the Lord, the power of God is in the temple, is in the house. Hallelujah. Lift your hands with me. Come on, lift them up. The Bible said, lift them up holy hands, holy hearts, a holy faith, a holy love, a holy life to a holy God. We've got a few more coming down. I'm going to wait for those before I pray this prayer. Oh, God, I feel the glory of God. My Lord, I must say, say, Oh, and my Lord, the Holy Ghost is in this place. Everybody down. Father, spread your wings, spread your covering over this church. Let the glory of God fall in this temple. Let the presence of a living Christ engulf the hearts and the lives of the body of Christ. May the presence and the spirit of Jesus cover you like a garment. Descend upon you and clothe you. May he wrap himself round about you and cradle you in his heart. Maybe he become your shield, your covering. May God preserve you from evil. May God cause you to walk 
in the light of his glory, in freedom, in deliverance, in victory, in power, living that overcoming life in the name of Jesus. I pray if you haven't given your heart to Christ, don't you walk out those doors until you say, Lord, I surrender it all to you. I give it to you. I hold on to nothing in this earthly realm, not even my own life. I want your freedom. I want your love. I want your joy. I want your peace. I want the life of God in me. Say with me, Lord, enrapture my heart. Enrapture my heart. Rapture my heart. Bring me to where I need to be and where you want me to be with you in that right relationship with my Father, my God, and my Lord. Lord, I bring it all to you. And by faith, I lay it on the altar. I release it, and I walk away from it. I put it in your hand. I will not control it. I will not dictate to it. It's all yours. The children you give me, they're yours. The husband you give me, he's yours. The wife you give me, she is yours. The job you gave me, it's yours. The life you give me, it's yours. I came with nothing. I will leave with nothing. It's all yours. See, that's freedom. And I release it to you. I release it to you. And when you do that, that wicked one can't touch you. He can't touch you. He can't touch you. He has nothing to hold on to because you're free. He whom the Son has set free is free. Free. Now God, God, God can work and do what He wills. Because you're not in it anymore. Say, I'm not in it anymore. I'm not controlling it anymore. I'm not in the way anymore. I've walked out the picture. I said, God, it's yours. It's yours. Job was there when God took everything he had, even all his children. The Bible said Job fell on his faith and he worshiped. He worshiped. Can you worship if you lose it all? Are you there? Can you worship if God took everything from you? Can you worship? Remember, you had everything you had, he gave to you. See, that's freedom. Truth is freedom. Freedom from the lie. Freedom from the darkness. Freedom from bondage. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to come down here. And uh, I, I don't know. i uh, got a house full tonight. I'm going to praise him. Can we put our hands together for Pastor Spencer? We honor you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a time of altar ministry. And if you would like to be prayed for, uh, we've got some amazing ushers and prayer team that are ready in position that are just going to position you. And those of you that um, have to leave, you're welcome to leave. We want to invite you to come to either our Knowing Jesus class to know more about Jesus. Come this Tuesday at 615 or sign up for Belong. Or if you just want to linger in this room. Um, and just there's a sweet presence of the Lord and just continue to linger and enjoy this time. You're more than welcome to stay. But if you would like prayer for any area, but specifically healing and miracles, uh, I encourage you to stay and have him pray for you. Last service was just fantastic. Last week was amazing. And so however long it takes, I encourage you to wait. And God's got a blessing just for you. So we're going to leave Pastor Spencer to pray for people. And if you'd like prayer, please come down to the altar. And our, like I said, our ushers will position you. And uh, we'll go right down the line and he'll bless you. And uh, 
It's going to be an amazing time. For everyone else, we love you. Make sure you do not miss the next two weeks. We are in Solemn Assembly, Healing Revival. So make sure you're here next Sunday and the Sunday after. Do not miss what God's doing. Love on someone before you leave. But again, if you want to stay for a blessing, please stay or linger in the room. We love having you guys. You never know what God's going to do when we step into the unknown. So here we go. Let's see what God does this afternoon. Thank you guys for coming, and we'll uh, see you next week.